the Diamond Sutra. Meditation leads to ultimate freedom. But the, before it could lead to the ultimate freedom, certain things happen. You go to sit down in meditation. You inform everyone in the house that you are going to meditate. So do not make the noise. If you are the elderly person or the in charge of the house, you can control the children. Do not put on television, you are meditating. And things like these happen. But what about the cars passing on the street, the blaring music playing, the dogs barking, the neighbors talking loud? You get upset with all these things and you find sometimes it is frustrating. So you want to go to a spiritual sanatorium, a khanka, an ashram, or things like these in order to find a place where you can meditate quietly. These things we can see, we react to these, but what about all that is going on deep within you? And what is going on within you? There is a monologue, a dialogue, you have CDs, the past recordings, DVDs, all these things go on happening. They keep on playing their effect, but you cannot see it. Over these you have no control. What can be done? You can look at the outside things, but not the things that is happening within you. Meditation becomes a difficult situation then. If you want to keep the child quiet, because human mind is like a little child who is recalcitrant, you cannot control it, his energy is so much that you cannot control his energies. He is hyper, he is restless, he wants to do something or the other. So what you do, you give him some toys to play with. You give him some mind-teasing exercises. So now the two children, they got the Christmas gift of technologically highly developed toys. Both of them are sitting in the living room playing with their own toys and you can do your work. The children are happy, they cannot disturb you because they are lost into their own world. In the field of meditation, when you start the inward journey, Similar kind of toys are given to the seekers in the form of rituals, in the form of zikr, in the form of mantras, chanting, in the form of rosary. And you will see the people sitting down holding their rosaries just as holding their toys just like the children holding the toys and playing with them in their own and live in their own world. These things work to a certain extent.
But when you are going deeper into, you have to leave all that is visible assistance along the path. A poet, a shire has said, this composition is very beautiful. It is about when you go into meditation sessions and the composition goes on, I'll recite it in the language it is done and then a simultaneous English translation. Jab dil ko neenda jati hai aur ruh bhi kuch gafil hoti hai Jab dil ko neenda jati hai when heart has fallen into a trance, jab dil ko neend a jati hai aur ruh bhi kuch gafil hoti hai. Gafil means in a state of intoxication. Two things happen. The kalp, the heart comes into a state of trance and simultaneous effect of that is the ruh, the being, the soul attains to a state of intoxication. Jab dil ko neenda jati hai aur ruh bhi kuch gafil hoti hai Phir mein hi akela hota then I am all alone. Or yaar ki mehfil hoti hai. Or yaar ki mehfil hoti hai. The word yaar is referred to a companion, to a beloved. And in this particular composition is refers to the mystic, to the shaykh, to God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or whatsoever be. Or phir mein hi akela hota hum, or yaar ki mehfil hoti hai. Then I am all alone and there is the company, there is the company of the beloved. I am withdrawn from the outer world and the inner world too. Kal sahil walo se ro ro Kal sahil walo se ro ro Ye doobne wale kehte te Kal sahil walo se ro ro Ye doobne wale kehte te Jo moj duba de tufaan ko Jo moj duba de tufaan ko Wo moj hi sahil hoti hai Wo moj hi sahil hoti hai There are two words Sahil. Sahil means shore. And the shore of what? Shore of something that flows. Energy flows. Water flows. And when water is flowing, there is a river bed. And you can remain on the shore, admiring the flow of the water. Kal sahil walo se roro. Lamenting. Sad in a very low voice. There are people who are standing on the shore and there are people who are up a stream, who are in the stream. Kal sahil walo se ro ro ye doob ne wale It means you have to drown in the stream. A stream of the river, the energy field, the tawajjo of the shape. Those who are in the stream, those who are within the energy field of the shape, those who are in the tavachu, the flow of the energy of the master, 
calling to those who are standing on the shore kal sahil walon se ro ro ye doobne wale kehte the give them the message jo mauj duba de toofan ko the wave that comes and drowns the ocean the wave that drowns the the strongest of the storm turbulence wo mauj hi sahil ko ti hai that wave alone is the shore you are looking for the shore but what is the shore in reality constantly the waves arise on the surface wherever there is a flow there is a energy there is water there are waves and when a wave comes in when the flow of energy comes towards you or the tawajjuh of the shape comes towards you you feel its presence deep within you the turmoil the disturbance all that is inner noise verily disappears drowns into that we that alone is the sign that alone is the shore where you have to reach emits the disturbance that is where you have to reach you remember like one of the myriad waves one day you appear on the ocean of life zindagi ke samandar mein utha tha ek din lehron sa lehron means the waves like one of the myriad waves i have come into existence on the surface of the ocean जिंदगी के समंदर में उठा था एक दिन लहरों सा मिट आज चला सागर की गहराई में टू दे आई है वास्टनेस ऑफ दी ओशन आई हैव डिजोल्व इन टू दी वास्टनेस ऑफ द ओशन रह गई एक खामोशी सी हर मौज में मौज मीन्स अ वे दैट कॉन्स्टेंटली अ राइज ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द माइंड रह गई एक खामोशी सी हर मौज में तूफानों को जैसे साहिल मिल गया हर रह गुजरने इट एपियर्स दैट इन एवरी सरकम स्टांस इन सिचुएशन देर इज साइलेंस देर इज खामोशी देर इज साइलेंस वेन दिस हैपन्स meditation leads to ultimate freedom but you have to leave your toys that are given by the vested interest because they do not want you to attain to that state do you think one who has drowned in the ocean of the bliss would he be interested in these petty toys do you think one who has attained to the ultimate health will be bothered about the physicians and the doctors and what the doctors do they keep you at a certain level of health that you are not healthy but you remain at the level of survival so the world goes on in order to attain the ultimate freedom you have to understand the human life life moves in seven year cycles starting from birth to death each cycle is of seven years the seven is a mystical number when life is allowed to move naturally and there is no interest of any kind the interest of the priest the politicians and all those custodians who consider themselves to be the custodian of the religion 
By the time you attain to the age of 42, a different kind of maturity comes. It is the maturity beyond the known. It is a sexual maturity. And with that comes the maturity in meditation. Without the sexual maturity, your energies remain diverted. Many kinds of desires, anxiety keeps on surfacing. By the time one attains the age of 42, the inward journey begins. Something that you have not known before. The Swedish psych psychoanalyst Carl Gustav Jung, he was a physician. He said, during my medical practice, I have come to this conclusion on the basis of my experience. If by the time one attains the age of 40, religion is given to the person, we can save the humanity, we can save the man. By the time one attains the age of 42, he should have been finished with all that disturbs the sex, the male-female relations, and all that relates to that. Something that was begun at about the age of 14 has now attained the fruition. It is at the age of 14 when the first flowering of your existential bioenergy began with puberty and that continues until the age of 42. At the age of 14, the outward journey begins. The age before that is known as the age of autosex. You are unaware of the physical movement, movement of the energy through the physical body, physical channels. But at about the age of 14, the outward journey begins. One becomes an extrovert, it starts moving towards the other, to the other pole. Love then evolves an expression of extrovertism. Love then evolves as an expression of extrovertism. Relationships start. It is the way to think of the other. And meditation is to think of one's own center. You remember there, if you have to draw a circle, there is a point. You can draw a point anywhere on the page, but that point cannot be considered as a center. In order to have that point known as center, it must have a circumference. Without the circumference, the point will remain simply a point and it will not be considered the center. The inward journey entails that you journey from the circumference to the center begins and you establish yourself in the center from where myriads of circumferences can be drawn using the different distances from the center to the circumference. The life of extrovertism or ex the life of extroversion begins at the age of 14 and it comes to an end at the age of 42. These two are not really the mathematical ages. 
Sometimes it happens in an individual, it happens before. The journey begins before and ends later than 42 or earlier than that. As one lives his life, he comes to know the joy and the sadness of love. Knows its beauty and ugliness. Experiences the great moments of ecstasy and the darkness of the valley of love. One knows the fulfillment and fruition in love. With this begins the inward journey towards the center, towards the self. But we depend on the others for happiness and joy. And we forget that the real joy comes when you discover your totality within. Remember you have two things. One is the body and that which enters the body. It is said in almost all the religions, quran e paak quran e majid Bible in Genesis chapter 1 says God created man in his image. We immediately think that God is like us. Lucky thing the animal kingdom does not have their own scriptures. Just as man considers himself that if God created man in his image that God must be looking like me. Lucky thing the animals cannot speak or think as far as I know. Otherwise the lions will say that God is lion looking like a lion. And if, and if at all donkeys could speak, they will certainly say God is like a donkey. But it does not happen. But then how did God create man in his image? Is he a form? No, God is not a form. It is formless. He is in the form of light. It is said when the body was created. When the body was created and you remember the body comes with the interaction of ovum and sperm. This is how all the bodies come into existence with an interaction between ovum and sperm. Then when he put the soul into it, Ru, because of the darkness within it could not enter. Then he took out the light from the forehead of Hazrat Apayambar sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when he put that and he took out this light from his peshani, from his forehead. Forehead, what is that forehead? This symbolizes the third eye center when your vision changes from the physical eye, physical vision to that which is mystical vision. To say that the light from the Peshani, it is the wisdom of a mystical vision, not that which you can see through your eyes. From the eyes, through the eyes you see only that is physically possible. But when the mystical eye is open, yes it has been the seed has been put into you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taken out from the forehead of the messenger. And it was put into, then the soul could stay with you. So what did he do? He created you as the light that he was, the formless, gave you that vision, the mystical vision that you can see beyond the physical eyes. The moment that vision begins to attain fruition in you, you see life in a different way. 
you move from form to formless you can give everything any relation or anything any thought of form but when you move from form to formless that's where the spiritual journey ends you constantly move in the realm of the form in the realm of the known and when the form dissolves you attain to the state of formlessness the journey of the meditation begins with form and ends in formless as one lives his life in the outer world in the world of objects and beings guided by the forms with the two eyes that are given to you the physical eyes one knows the beauty and ugliness sometimes experiences great moments of ecstasy and darkness of the body one knows the fulfillment and fruition in love when this begins to happen that during those moments you get the glimpses of the mystical vision or something deeper the inward journey begins but we depend on the other the outer for happiness and joy when your joy and happiness depends on the other it is dependence dependence can never lead you to the freedom joy is the fragrance of the freedom bliss or happiness is the fragrance of freedom and the joy that does not evolve out of freedom is not really a joy or dependence leads to limitations in such a situation the joy that comes through the extroversion is momentary you can meet the other only for a few moments and you remember the meeting happen meeting is a moment's ecstasy meeting is a moment's ecstasy you can meet the other only for a few moments and then again you are separate just in the middle of this togetherness two begins to fall apart this is starts the moment you get together with togetherness one begins to think as if such togetherness is possible with the existence once you are one with the existence you will never fall apart and this communion this association with the existence is meditation or marakwa marakwa connects you with the existence internally the hindi word for this is yoga means to connect you are being connected through an invisible bond to that which is within you this happens somewhere in the deepest core there arises a joy and freedom only bliss is there because it is an ocean of bliss it is ocean of harmony it is ocean of oneness there arises joy and freedom there is no dark valley this bliss this happiness is eternal this is celebration love connects you with the existence through the other and meditation connects you with the existence internally bliss then is the outcome this happens when the light of awareness dawns 
you know the true nature of the things around because the mystical vision is now active in you whose seed was put into your forehead but it remained dormant it is the tawajjuh and within the energy field of an awakened one of a sheep this begins to grow and attains fruition you are no more dependent on the physical energy physical vision you rely on this mystical vision because it has become functional now awareness this means the awareness has come into you and this awareness renders each moment a precious moment extraordinary and sublime then the small things are no more is smaller when you attain to such a state of awareness sensitivity and love can touch even an ordinary pebbles on the sea shore then love can touch even the most ordinary pebbles on the sea shore those pebbles turned into precious gems it is the level of awareness that comes when the mystical vision begins to operate that makes everything precious and meaningful therefore the purpose of the meditation is to activate that mystical vision whose seed was put into you it needs just as any other seed it can remain on the shelf but when it goes in the hands of a gardener he prepares a bed he prepares a flower bed and plants the seed deep in the womb of the earth where it begins to grow attains fruition and when flowers and the fruits begin to appear on it the season of spring has come the moment the moment this vision begins to attain to fruition the season of spring has arrived in your life the season of spring has arrived in your life and when season of spring has arrived into your life what am i doing here with this talk go to the garden where the season of the spring is in its full glory deep within there is no need for me to have a talk just go to that garden where the flowers are blooming in numerous colors these give you a different kind of a energy that you can fly you can do anything 